This is going to be a quick video on managing requirements in SharePoint. It's actually not very complicated, um, so hopefully it won't take very long um, using some of the basic features of SharePoint to help you manage and organize your requirements just a little bit better and maybe evolve out of using a Word document or an Excel document into something a little bit more dynamic um, that allows your stakeholders to kind of slice and dice information in a way that makes the most sense to them. So what I'm sharing right here on the screen is your basic SharePoint site. Most SharePoint site looks something like this uh, when you create a new one. Um, and one of the core functionalities or features that a SharePoint site has um, that we'll be using is a list. So if you go to new, you can see you can create a new list. There's a lot of different things that we could use, but for us in this instance, we're going to stick with the list. Um, when you create a new list, you can kind of start with the template. These templates are for kind of specific uses. So for our case, we're just going to go with a blank list and we will call it requirements. When your new list is created, um, it'll start out with just one column, the title. There are other columns that are hidden that are kind of system default, like who it was, who the line item was created by, when it was modified, things like that, things that you can't really edit. Um, but in terms of things that you can edit, it, it doesn't really give you any more. So it starts with the title. More than likely, you'll use the title as your kind of requirement name um, column. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and change this to the requirement name or requirement title. I think that sounds better. Um, and then you can add additional columns that make sense for the types of requirements that you intend to capture in this space. So if you were maybe creating a user story or using this for user story management, you can have like, you know, that business value statement as a, I want so that, or you can have acceptance, correct acceptance criteria in this space. There's a lot of different options for your columns. Um, a single line of text is kind of what the title is just for a limited amount of text to kind of get your point across. Multiple line of text is for that kind of longer description. Um, numbers, if you have a value that you want to be specifically a number. So if you're managing user stories in SharePoint, you could use the number for estimations to make sure people are actually inputting a number. Um, yes, no is really the same as a choice, but it's limiting you to just yes and no. And as mentioned, a choice allows you to input multiple choices um, for what you might potentially want um, in the column. Date and time could be useful if things have start dates, end dates, or whatever dates are relevant to the type of work you're doing. And obviously a hyperlink takes you to something else. If you want to link to a process or something like that, you could use the hyperlink field. So in, in this case, the, the most likely next column you'll add is the multiple lines. Um, for the description. Um, and there's some things you could do to kind of modify how the description exists. Um, in this case, um, you know, I don't like to have rich text because people can kind of go wild and put all kinds of fonts and colors and things like that. So instead, I prefer to not have rich text so people just have to stick to spaces and tabs um, for formatting and it keeps it a little bit cleaner, but obviously use whatever makes sense in your space. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now you have another column. And if you're inputting requirements that maybe you've captured somewhere else, maybe they're in a spreadsheet or something like that, you can import a spreadsheet directly into um, your list. In fact, when you're creating a new list, you can choose to start from a spreadsheet and it'll automatically create all the columns. And if you edit in grid view, you can quickly edit all the columns without having to click every item and kind of edit it in that form style. Now for the sake of speed here, I've already went ahead and created a list um, called business requirements. Okay, so this is my business requirements list. Um, my business requirements are kind of based off of um, an article I wrote some time back about functional decomposition. So I'm kind of going from a higher level business requirement down to a solution requirement. Um, and in this case, um, you know, just to keep things kind of light, I went with the business objective of kind of getting a beach ready body. So in this case, that means lowering your body fat, gaining muscle and enhancing your overall wellness as your top kind of top level business requirements. And then these are kind of the next level um, requirements for the sake of ex this example. I'll only go down to this level, even though here I've kind of documented a level below that um, just because you would just repeat the same process to kind of get there. So in this case, I want to talk about 
kind of tracing back up to that higher level requirement a little bit. Um, there's two different ways you could do that. The first is to create a new column and make it a choice column. And in this case, I only have three objectives, right? So um, I could make it a choice and just list out those three objectives um, and allow people to select from those objectives. Similarly to how I've made this status column here, when I click the status column, oh, let me go to edit grid view. When I click the status column, I'm really only giving the options to pick from the status that I've already kind of defined um, and you can't add additional new ones. And that's kind of the same idea. You have to add that objective. Additionally, or a different way you could trace back that's a little bit more dynamic and more useful if you're you're not you're at a lower level. So say you're you're wanting to trace back to business requirements that could be changing or you're writing test cases that you want to take chase back to requirements that could change or be updated or have additions. Then what you might want to do is have a lookup. Um, so let's go to add column and go to more. And then we go to this thing called the lookup. Um, and a lookup basically links you to a different list on the site. Uh, there's many different ways you can uh, link to a list depending on your, your needs. So if your requirements are going to be linked to images on the site, you could have images or process models or documents or whatever it may be um, that's relevant. In this case, we're wanting to link back to those objectives. So we'll go ahead and link back to those objectives. Depending on the list, you could potentially have different items show. So in this case, I want the title to be there and I'm going to put the title linked to the item. Um, and the difference between this title and that title is this will just show you kind of that flat text. This one will allow me to click it and go to those objectives if I wanted to read it and get a little bit more information. Um, and just to kind of show you what it might look like to have those additional fields. And I didn't add very many fields to the objective um, list. So I'll just pick one. Um, at random here, we'll go with created um, so we could just see that information and see how it looks. Okay, so now I have this objective field. I don't I haven't input anything yet. Um, and just to make it a little bit faster, we'll go to grid view. So eat less carbs is linked to the objective of lowering my body fat. So once I select that and as input, then it'll automatically kind of grab this information from that list, which is when it was created to input it there. I'm not inputting anything here. It's just information that already exists on this other list. Makes it very useful if you're trying to marry two lists um, and, and the other list has some valuable information that might be relevant um, to what you're doing here. In some cases, you might want to put the, the status of that other item. For example, if it gets canceled, you know that this um, requirement no longer has to be done. Um, and let's go ahead and populate uh, the rest of these columns here. Eight more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and exit the grid view here so you can see it. So now I have my requirements list. I have all my requirements requirements listed here, the descriptions, the statuses they're in. And then I'm here tracing back to the objectives. So I could click this and it'll take me back to the objectives and I could read the description. If it'll load, I can read the description, which is to be leaner, um, the status of that um, objective. Um, and let's just go back to our business requirements here. Um, some other fun, cool things that you could do to kind of help better manage your requirements in this space um, is related to grouping and visualizing um, these kind of rows or items in the list. So the first and simplest thing you could do is to group things by status or by a column. Um, and the column could be anything. So if you have a column, um, if you're using like the people column to call out specific people, like if they're specific stakeholders or specific BAs who are working on that requirement, you can group by that. Um, in this case, uh, I have the status column, so I'll go ahead and group by the status. And then I can see everything by status. So if I want to know all the things that are in motion, I can see them quickly and easily here and kind of hide away anything I don't want to see. I can even actually click this and it'll kind of just drill down and only show me the things that I want to see. Um, let's go back up one. Um, and then another cool thing you could do if you're um, managing user stories in this space is to change the gallery view, um, which gives you a little bit more of a preview of, of the different things and kind of organizes it much in a much more Kanban style. Um, so if you want that visual, that Kanban visual, or if you're using this to separate it by different users, um, you can um, have the person listed here and then 
show all the different people uh, so people can kind of quickly drill down into what's most relevant to them. And this could be useful whether you're talking about status, whether you're talking about stakeholders, whether you're talking about business process, whether you're talking about component, feature, whatever it is, it basically just helps you organize information so that the people who are needing to consume this information, both your stakeholders and yourself, can kind of see it, understand it, make decisions um, as quickly and easily as possible. So I think that covers my high level of managing business requirements in SharePoint. Um, it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to do fancier things, there's way cooler things that you could do in SharePoint, um, like using flows and rules and things like that for approvals. Um, but just to keep it at a high level for this video, we're just talking about managing the requirements um, in SharePoint and kind of keeping them organized. If you want more videos about those cooler kind of features, let me know um, in the comments and I'll either make a new video or answer you in the comments if it's, if it's a quick bit of advice. And once again, thanks for watching.